Evening all. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, special evening to Ian Maffer um, and Dave Maffey Jones, so members of the Cambridge United Board that have joined us for the first annual uh, general meeting of CUSP. So um, for those that don't know me, I think most of you do. Um, my name's James and I'm the new chair of CUSP um, with the vice chair uh, Ben Payne and uh, Philip Shah, who's the secretary, who you all received an email from. Um, so just to start off, I just wanted everyone just to take a minute just to remember um, Carol, who did an, an amazing amount for the club. I, I think everyone here would have spoken to her on pretty much every match day you went to, brought a raffle ticket, booked an away travel, Golden Gamble, anything. So we'll just take a minute just to, to respect and remember Carol. Thank you very much. So, um, so just to run through um, how this evening is going to go. So, um, there's a couple of agenda points that you can see on my screen. So, um, I'm obviously doing the welcome and an introduction, um, and then we're going to go through the achievements that we've had over the past year, um, and then what our goals are for the the coming year, uh, and then we'll hear from from Ian, um, who just give an update on how everything's going at the club currently. Um, and then there's some points for discussion that we'll open up um, around sort of the constitution and, and various other things. Um, and then we'll, we may we may ask Ian to go, depending on how the conversation is going, uh, and then see if there's any any points for any question or any other business from from people that maybe the club will get, become to know, but might not need to know as of yet. So we'll do that, and then. Yeah, we'll have a closing statement from myself and then an agreement of when and how things are going to be published. Um, a point to note is we have recorded this AGM, so we'll be making the AGM available to those that aren't able to to be here today. So we'll put the video up and people can watch this and see all our lovely faces um, and hear what we discuss. So we will make that available to all fans. We'll put it on our social media. So everyone will see that. So um, just to introduce the uh, other members of CUSP that we haven't said hello to. Um, so we've got uh, Mark Mumford, uh, Dave Burkett, who's also our mental health um, officer, first aider, uh, Sarah King, uh, Chris Neils, Nigel Brown, and we've also got uh, Paul Moffat, who unfortunately his video isn't working. So evening to everyone here. So um, we'd like to start with the achievements that we've had in the past 12 months since CUSP has been formed. So under Nigel's uh, leadership, CUSP was formed last year and we were all voted on. We voted Nigel as chair. Um, and so I just want to just pass over to Dave Burkett, who was sort of, who helped the club uh, with the mental health. So over to Dave. Uh, yeah, I was, um, we were asked for a volunteer at our, one of our uh, first meetings with regards to somebody who would be interested in uh, representing fans with uh, mental health. Um, Godric has been the real driver for this. Um, uh, part and parcel of making Cambridge United a, a mentally healthy club. Um, had a meeting with Godric as to what we can do and how we best approach. Uh, this uh, obviously I've got on my lanyard uh, mental health officer um, it's, a, it's a slow burner and we're trying to drive awareness we were going to come straight out with phone numbers and a launch of um, people to talk to but I think we've kind of like held back from going big big time for the time being we're sort of generally introducing and I've had conversations with people that uh, 
at the ground on a Saturday and sat down with a couple of people who happened to notice my lanyard. Um, I've also been along to some of Phil Mallon's training sessions, um, which uh, have been well attended and sat and had a cup of coffee with people. But we're slowly building this relationship uh, across the club and as, as we've seen in the Daily Telegraph bit, building awareness that we're here for fans, players, workers within the club. And it, it's a slowly driving, um, slowly burning subject, but we're, we are becoming more and more aware that we're here for people and, and the work is ongoing. So, And again, things like the Telegraph, uh, bringing awareness to people and it was all on social media and more and more people are aware. I've taken the uh, mental health uh, on your side course through Cambridge United. Uh, separately, I've also taken a first for sport qualification with regards to mental health, education, etc. For grassroots football, I'm a representative of Cottenham United Colts. So it's educating myself and I'm also just a, a sympathetic and empathetic ear to talk to. And um, it's something that we're growing and will grow across the years. Thanks, David. Um, another thing that Dave, uh, David has been very, uh, very passionate about and has really driven on this year is well, <clears throat> the end part of last season was getting uh, the ball boys and girls back from uh, grassroots football clubs. So now uh, the ball, ball boys and ball girls are all from local football teams. So then that helps further drive sort of repeat business. People come back and have a really good time at Cambridge United and hopefully see us win. They would then come back as repeat business. So David has been really sort of working with the club on that and getting the ball boys and girls back to sort of grassroots football rather than just youth development players that may have already been going to the game. So yeah, David's done a big amount of work with the club on that as well. We've had a lot of positive feedback on that, and and a lot of them have come back as 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 fans that had never visited the club before and are now coming back as fans and indeed buying, looking to buy season tickets, obviously, as and when they can. So that's been really successful. And as long as uh, having a great time as well and engaging with the club uh, and the players and, and getting close up to the action, it's been, been really good. And I've had a lot of good, positive feedback. Thank you. Um, so then the, another big thing that we've done this year is um, Nigel did a lot of work on it, was getting the fixture board at the front of the ground reinstated. So there's a brand new... Uh, fixture board that was paid for by the um, the CUSP United Endeavour Fund. So for those that aren't aware, the United Endeavour Fund was um, sponsored by Inc and the money was um, given to CUSP to try and enhance the fan experience. So yeah, Nigel did most of the legwork for this uh, and got, got the new fixture board up. And yeah, we announced it last week on our social media and the Cambridge Independent also did a piece on their website to sort of show how it was yeah, put together. And I think it was very well received by fans and a good addition back to the front of the ground. Um, and then point C, I just wanted to pick up on something that general fans might not see. And that being the relationship that we've, we've built with the club and the board. Um, so in the constitution, it actually states that we should have four meetings with the club. Um, I don't know if anyone's been counting, but there has been six meetings uh, between CUSP and the board. Uh, three of those have, were before uh, lockdown and three of those were while lockdown was happening. So it shows that we've, we've built a really good relationship. I, I hope Ian agrees uh, that we've, we've built a, a good relationship with the board. And we also met uh, Paul Barry. Uh, in person so Paul came over for a couple of weeks uh, last season and we actually got to meet him at the South Stand um, so yeah it shows that we've it's sort of the un, the unseen sort of achievement of this year was building that strong relationship as uh, cusp with the Cambridge United board and they take on our feedback and hopefully can see a benefit of us because we're certainly starting to see a benefit as fans with us happening. So then that leads me nicely onto what our goals, so point three, what our goals for next year are. So um, we all agree that probably the biggest biggest thing that we're going to have to do is to support the club with a reintroduction of fans. So Ian's been in contact with us about how we reintroduce fans. So the season ticket holders get the the first priority, which I think has been very 
greatly received today by the people that didn't get it while lockdown was happening. So thousand tickets have gone on sale and a big percentage of those were sold today. Um, and then it's sort of the next steps. So what happens once lockdown eases a bit more and potentially, hopefully more fans can come back to the Abbey Stadium. So how, how us as Cusp support the club and who gets picked next, really, whether you just open it out to a free ballot of people or the club have other ideas of how to reintroduce fans and subsequently away fans as well, how you get away fans back because that's a, a big plus at any game of football. So that's our number one goal. I think that will be on there for, I think, personally speaking, that's probably the next six months sorted with Cusp and the club's dialogue because I think that's how long it will take until we've got a full ground, everyone back in. Um, we'd like to improve the communication with the fans with Cusp. So this isn't anything to do with the club. This is how Cusp uh, better communicates with the fans around feedback and questions. So there's been a couple of points in the past that maybe questions have been given to Cusp and in minutes they haven't been seen to be answered or haven't been seen to be asked to the club so we're gonna make a concerted effort to to show that we are asking Ian the maybe slightly harder questions but and also showing the 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 fans that we aren't we aren't not asking them and it is the club that are asking us not to give the give all the answers to all the hard, the hard questions that they will do it in their own time so that's something that we would really like to improve so I think we've got a really good relationship with the board but yeah I think this season the next thing to do is really engage the fans a bit more with Cusp and then further to point C is to establish a two-way communication so we've muted the idea of maybe doing a Cusp forum so getting fans together and we just be the facilitators of that so not including the club at all just get the fans together and hear what the gripes are between fans um, and then we package that together and we take it to the club and say look this is what we've done and just try and yeah increase increase cusps front end to fans rather than just really working on our relationship with the board so yeah there are goals for next year and that nicely passes me over to to ian for uh, an update in the club and how the club see cusp working uh, thanks very much james and from our point of view, from my point of view, representing the club, CUSP, I think, has had a really good year and it shows, it's providing us with a vehicle, a, a, a way that we can communicate with a broad range of fans and, and get views. And that, I think the meeting, <clears throat> we, so I've been doing a lot of talking today, so I'm a bit croaky. Uh, the, the meeting we had where we did the Q&A over uh, getting fans back in was a really good example because we met, you had loads of really good questions. And then actually those are the questions that fans want to know. So let's answer them. And we put it out there and we covered a lot of information really quickly. And so I think that's, that's the sort of uh, activity I'd really encourage you uh, to, to carry on with. And our position is always, if, if we can share information and make it public, we're up for doing that, because why wouldn't we? There's, there are some things which we are going to share with you that are confidential. And I guess that sort of is where there can be a bit of a rub that you need to, to manage your audience, because either we don't tell you uh, because you can't share it and you don't want to be in that position, or we do. But broadly, I think 90% of the, the stuff that's going on, we're, we're happy to share. And uh, so what, what are the big things that are coming up? And I think you're right to put as your item 3A, support the club with a safe introduction of fans. If I could pick one big issue for now, that is clearly it. <clears throat> and I had a meeting with uh, SGSA Sports Ground Safety Authority uh, representative last Thursday, uh, looking at reintroduction of fans. And there is um, 
a guide. It's 80, it's called SGSA2, I think. And it's uh, 85 pages of packed text about how to get people back into a ground in a socially distanced way. And one thing I hadn't uh, picked up, which I was, uh, the uh, guy Martin explained to me, is that they, SGSA, have quite a lot of power over grounds. They're the ones who, uh, if working alongside the safety advisory group, they work together, they don't give us a certificate, we can't play a game with a crowd. So uh, I said, well, what happens if, you know, our crowd misbehaves? And he said, well, interestingly, in the COVID environment, the pub organization Public Health England, or whatever its successor is going to be, will have even greater powers than SGSA. So to the extent that if there's a terrorist that's mingling and it shouldn't be, you know, they're, they're doing the Bosman and they're sort of bouncing up and down together with no shirts on to take an extreme. Uh, the, the, that terrorist could be shut down. The game could be stopped. Uh, the terrorist could be emptied. You know, so there's all sorts of rules that we're having to work with that we haven't had to work with before. And uh, I was on the line of uh, people buying tickets today. Uh, you know, a lot of people are really enthusiastic. And the sense I got was that everyone just wants to make it work. But they're going to have to make it work in a different way. And there's all sorts of things that we're going to ask of fans about how they come to the ground when they leave. And I was getting loads of really good questions in that queue. You know, so do we have to arrive early? Yeah, it might be helpful actually because there's a peak of about in the 15 minutes before kickoff uh, where people arrive and then there's a bit of a crush. Helpful if we spread it over half an hour. What happens at the end of the game when you have to you'll have to leave in an orderly way and you'd be told when you can get up. It's a bit like being in class at school, you know. Right, back row can leave now. Then the next row, ne no stop bunching. You know, we're going to have to do that, but it will mean that. Anyone who's looking at Cambridge United operating our system says, yeah, that is, they're really doing their level best to make it work. And the upside, there's two upsides of making it really work. One is we continue to be allowed to have a crowd in. And the second is our hope that if we can manage our bubbles well, and people stick within them and the SGSA say, yeah, we're doing everything right, then there is scope, I think, to increase the number of tickets. We can't say what that number is yet, but we're not going to get there if people mess around. Now, I don't think for one minute people will, but I think it's about communicating uh, some of these messages. And I think CUSP have got a really important role in doing that. Uh, and, and I'm with you, James, this is six months. Uh, this could be the whole season of us operating in this, uh, socially distant, slightly weird world. But, you know, we've just got to work together on that. Uh, the other, I'll happily take questions on any of this, um, but the other thing I want to just uh, mention, two things I follow. Um, we, you will be aware that we had uh, argued the point that I follow passes would be made for home and away uh, games for season ticket holders whilst crowds weren't allowed in the stadium. That was debated last week in the League Two meeting. And the <clears throat> uh, it was a really good meeting and you know there's give and take in all things. And there's some good reasons why a number of clubs didn't want away tickets to be provided. And it's largely financial. And actually I can see the point. So the conclusion is that there'll be free passes for season ticket holders and until such for home games until such time as you're allowed into the stadium so that that's a definite decision it's well i say it's definitely it's going to be ratified by the efl board which hasn't been done yet so <laughs> yeah this is how quickly things are, are moving that was a conversation last thursday league two clubs still to be ratified by the board so we can't say it's it's a done deal they might change their mind but i think it's unlikely um the other thing I wanted to talk about is the new stadium. I was asked about that today in the line. And it's one of those things, isn't it, that we put it out there 
December last year. And uh, there's a sort of expectation that something is going to happen. And, and if it doesn't happen, then it's all a bit of a fantasy and it's never going to happen. Uh, and the truth is that in the last 10 days, I've had serious discussions both with architects and Marshall over um, location, scale. Um, but it all depends on Marshall getting planning permission for the wider development, which includes Greenbelt on that site, mile down to the uh, uh, east of us. If they get planning permission for that, why, or it's included within the planning envelope for the next planning round over the next 20 years or so, then I think there's a really good chance that we will have a new stadium there. If they don't get the planning permission, if it's not included in the planning envelope, it won't happen. I, th I think that they probably will. I hope they do. Um, but I think there's probably going to be a role there for fans in helping persuade our politicians that, you know, maybe that bit of green belt that's down that end isn't that important. And actually a community stadium which benefits the whole of the city and the region uh, would be far more valuable. Uh, so I think, again, that's something where we might come to cusp and say, well, how do we mobilise that, that fan base? To try and persuade our politicians because I think there's a nervousness for politicians of touching the green belt using land for stuff that's not housing so it's quite political um, but as I sit here now there's no reason for me to think it isn't going to happen because Marshall wants it to happen and uh, it's just part, wrapped up in a part of a wider development and this is going to take some years so there's no point in being disappointed that there hasn't been an announcement by the club that there's nothing happening just yet. Just, you have to roll with it. And we're being really honest and frank, it is taking time, but I think there's a credible chance it will happen. So th those are my uh, key things for the moment. There's all sorts of uh, other stuff going on. Um, it's been a very busy time, but perhaps if I just pause there, if you've got any questions for me before you yeah, move on. Sorry. To uh, yeah, Ian, uh, sorry, I, ju I just wanted to, to um, clarify a point about iFollow. So yeah. you mentioned about season ticket holders. So from the point of view of non-season ticket holders and people that can't get to the game, will we be able to um, log into iFollow and watch Games United on iFollow home and away this season? Yes, you will. Uh, and I really hope you do. You're going to have to pay £10 a game for it. That's okay. But you will be able to watch home and away. Uh, and that I follow income is going to be really important to the club. And we're going to keep most of it. So oh, that's good. spending oh, your good. 10 quid, uh, the deal done with I follow, which is run by EFL, uh, has been tweaked a bit to give us most of that 10 quid. Uh, and when you think of the crowd, which we will have, you know, we, we, we've got now, we'll have 1,600 season ticket holders in the ground. We might be able to release a few more tickets. Um, it's still going to be about half our average gate. So we're losing half our income on average for every home game. And But if we can make up for that with I follow income for home and away, that could make a really significant inroad into that. So, so that means then, effectively, what you're saying there is, is that by watching Cambridge on the, on the away games, We'll get income from that. We will get some income from that. Yeah, the uh, and that's one of the things that was debated uh, last week. It was whether the home club keeps it all. Now, there's uh, uh, a proportion of that for the away games will come to us, uh, and we want to create an uh, an environment where fans are more used to watching us uh, on the streaming service because it, it potentially is also revenue when we do have fans back that that might carry on. The, the, there's a, a deal had to be done with Sky to allow us to stream every game and Sky might change their mind at a point when fans are allowed back in fully, but it's just an interesting one to conjure with. Late Orient, for example, have spent shed loads of money uh, in, in a very smart, um, presentation suite 
uh, they don't use the iFollow um, platform, but the, you know they're really convinced that streaming could be a big way forward. Um, and what we're, what we're doing is we're going to uh, put we are putting time and money and effort into making a program that's viewable before the kickoff, and then at half time, and then at the end. So uh, you know, in beforehand, you might have Mark Bonner talking about team selection or injuries that week. Half time, bit of analysis on the first half, and uh, perhaps um, I don't know some game, some entertainment. And then at the end, uh, probably man of the match interview again. Bonds being interviewed, and the the aim is just to make it a bit more interesting than it is at the moment. If you've ever watched I Follow at the moment, you get the the first half screens dead <laughs> or <okay, laughs> to the ground, and then you start the second half. We're trying to make it like uh, um, you know a more watchable program, uh, and with the view of just attracting more and more people. That's great. That's excellent. I'm just going to just reshuffle the uh, agenda point. So leading on from what Ian was just saying there, so point five, we've got points for discussion. So we're going to open the floor up a bit. Um, so we'll jump to B around iFollow and any sort of content extras to make iFollow a little bit more of an attractive proposition or worthwhile to fans. So this was where we were going to open up the, the floor to the, fans that have joined so thank you Nigel Pierce. Um, <laughs> but yeah so this is this is a chance for anyone to sort of just just share any ideas and just discuss and yeah if Ian definitely says no he can pocket that no, no, idea. He's not going to say, definitely say no, no, no to anything on this uh, but I, I'd, I'd really like your pearls of wisdom your uh, bright ideas because we've not got a monopoly on the ideas uh, so if there's anything that you think would get fans really uh, <clears throat> interested and excited uh, then other than five goals in the first half <laughs> then, um, just just let us know could um yeah, Ian, could the, could, oh, sorry go on ben i was gonna say could could fans send in videos sort of like support messages for the team or something like that that could be played out beforehand or anything like that uh, uh, I, I guess they could uh i uh, i'm gonna make a note <laughs> <laughs> the, the man who's really driving this is uh, Tom Stewart. Um, uh, I like the idea. I just don't know uh, how it's going to fit with the format they're, they're working on, but I think it's quite a, quite a cool idea. Do we have much editorial control in over the, the beginning portion? Because could um, Coconuts revisit a classic match or something? Or Yeah. We have again. This is a, we have complete editorial control over what goes on at that time because it's going to be a slightly. It'll be run through our website. Okay. It won't be on. Uh, so I follow. Uh, I've learned quite a lot about it in recent weeks. Um, the way it works is there's the the camera streams and sends it to St George's Park, uh, where there's also it's also streamed for the uh, away uh, viewers. Sounds put on and it's sent back, but so that the the match bit we can't influence. It's going to be the same commentary you get from the BBC cams and the same pictures. The other bits we're hosting entirely ourselves, so we can do what the hell we like, really. Yeah, I wonder about revisiting classic matches, or you know, where are they now of former players or something? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea, I have, I have to say, about um, fans sending in their own little video clips, maybe 10 seconds long before the game, um, yeah. Yeah. supporting the team. But yeah. I think this games would be a really good uh, uh, subject to ask fans more generally. Seats so yeah. could actually go out and ask fans, come on, have you got any ideas for how we can uh, um, uh, spice up uh, the, uh, the, the, these iFollow feeds? Yeah, so we'll make we'll make all of this sort of public to fans, so they can see we've had this discussion, and we'll share on our social media. We'll probably pick points out, and we'll say an idea that was raised by Ben was we'd have people sending in videos. Would people be happy with this? And Philip's idea of using the coconuts to have classic matches shown well, again. So, yes, yeah. ask for fans' ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah we will do. Yeah, let's have your views. Yeah, yeah. It's 
James, it's a good opportunity to uh, to uh, uh, further our communication with the rest of the fan base as, as Cusp. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> so uh, move, moving on from that, um, we have um, some, so some of you may be aware, some of you may not be aware, we have a constitution that Cusp um, adhere to and follow that was set out by a working party just over 12 months ago. And having sort of been part of CUSP and we've worked hard as, as, as CUSP, as members of CUSP, we've, um, there's a couple of points that we just wanted to raise. And ideally what should happen here is if there's any constitutional changes, the fans uh, vote on them. And there has to be a percentage of the fans that are in attendance vote to say that they're happy with the changes. Um, the, the changes that we're, we're proposing we don't see as anything that changes how CUSP works or what CUSP does for the fans. It's purely just sort of some housekeeping with, with members, really. So um, the first point being the re-election. So in the constitution, it says that every two years um, there is a re-election. So everyone re-stands that has been on it for two years. So because we're only a year in, next year all nine of us now are going to re-stand um, and there's there's a danger here that we may have yeah a total new um, set of members so all 11 of us maybe aren't re-elected that that relies on people being um, standing but there's a worry here that cusp would then change totally and the relationship that we've built up with the board and with with ian is totally lost so what we're proposing here is that the top five existing CUSP members will remain as part of CUSP and then the then top six, not including those five, would then form the remaining spots on CUSP. So those six spots may then be including everyone on CUSP and we'd all be back again for another two years or it could be a new six. Um, and this was this has been passed around an internal meeting, and we just see this as uh, yeah, it's it's more to just keep a bit of consistency and keep up the relationship that we've already got with the fans and the club. So that's point one. We'll go back to uh, a vote, but any comments on that are, are very welcome from anyone that's on the meeting. Can I just clarify, James? Um, yep. Are you saying that? Um, only a proportion of the CUSP members will be up for re-election. No, 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 no. So we would all be up for re-election. So every member of CUSP would be up for re-election. So there'd be nine of us. And then there'd obviously be a, a social media campaign to see if more people would like to stand. So there may be another 11 people stand, for example. Um, and then, but what we're saying is there is the top five existing CUSP. So they may be placed second fourth tenth twelfth and thirteenth for example and then all the existing cusp are then under 13 we would say that those five people would remain on cusp because they are the top voted existing top five existing cusp members that are voted and then what we'd then take is the first elect like the most voted fan who isn't part of cusp and then work our way down that list and then you get your panel your new supporters panel from there. So we're not saying that we remain unreelected. It's just that five will remain. Five will be re-elected. However, the vote goes. I think I understand. I mean, another way of doing that would be having um, a certain proportion only of the cusp um, panel uh, up for re-election each year might be a little bit simpler but I, I understand exactly why you're doing it and I would happy I'm happy to support that yeah. thank you right I think it's important to stress that um, the the Constitution was kind of created Nigel before cusp came into existence so I think over the course of 12 months we've probably found a few areas where in in reality as we've gone through the year that that we've sort of felt that maybe it needs tweaking slightly. It's not that there's no kind of self-interest involved here in terms of protecting our own positions individually. It's more that 
cusp has evolved over the year and therefore we think the constitution might need to evolve slightly as well absolutely fully fully understand yeah okay uh, then the next one was the the chair and the vice chair tenureship so in in the constitution again there was there was nothing to say how long a chair or a vice chair stands um it was just said that we're welcome as cusp to appoint our own chair and vice chair so what we're going to say here is that the chair and vice chair will stand for two years um, and then there will be an internal vote within the rest of cusp for someone to then stand as chair and vice chair um, we have just made a point that if someone isn't challenged so there is no challenge for a chair role the current chair would then be able to restand so again it was just making it a bit more formal and saying that they would only stand two years unless they're unopposed when it comes to the end of their two-year tenureship. Sounds good. Um, and then uh, point III uh, was the co-op function. So um, we used this co-op function. So there was maybe not written as clearly as we could. So the co-op function we used very successfully um, with Sarah. Um, and so Sarah wasn't elected by the fans, but she was co-opt. So by co-op, we mean she expressed an interest to join CUSP. And then as other members of CUSP, we had an internal vote um, to say whether we felt that Sarah would be good to have on CUSP. And we unanimously voted to bring Sarah on. So hence Sarah coming on. Um, but Sarah will have to restand at the next election because that's how the constitution is written so it's just making it a little bit clearer that we can co-opt and it isn't just a we'll just pick our friends and we'll bring our friends on it's a no everyone on cusp has to agree it and then that person then has to restand for election at the next point although sarah did bring lovely biscuits to her first meeting <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, again, that's just something just to tidy it up. Sounds good. Cool. So we'll move on to point C. So as we've mentioned um, right at the top with the fixture board, we have this um, United and Endeavour Fund. And um, we were just we were opening it out to fans for ideas. Um, again, thanks, Nigel, for coming. Um, <laughs> that we to, to get some, some further ideas on how how best to to use this to further enhance um, the fan experience so something that has been spoken about and I think as other members of CUSP we've spoken about is a, a scoreboard if possible um, so CUSP would put up a percentage that is needed mm. and then from there then a, a crowdfunding would, would, mm -hmm. would, would stand but is it possible just to mention the scoreboard? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm having a meeting next week about a company with a company concerning the scoreboard. Okay. Um, so it may already have the funding in place. Okay. <laughs> so then we then welcome any any further any ideas we we'd like to use this fund. So, Inc. kindly put this fund forward. We'd like to use this fund to further enhance the fan experience at Cambridge United. So. We will, again, we will put this out on our social media. We're not going to publicise the amount, um, but we will publish this and, and ask for ideas on how we, how, we, how we use it, how we best use it. And if, if we are short, then there will be an opportunity to crowdfund, literally crowdfund to make Cambridge United. Just one thing, James. Um, I don't know whether it's relevant for, the, for this particular fund, but uh, a number of comments with regards to how identifiable we are on match day. Um, obviously, we have our lanyards um, and, and people have picked up on them. For As I said, I've had conversations with people who have noticed my mental health lanyard. But at other times, people are saying that they, they perhaps don't recognise us. And I didn't know whether it was worthwhile, if there was any spare Hummel kit or something that we could invest in for each and every one of us and, and get something printed on the back of them, you know, a cusp logo or something like that. I don't know if that's worth considering using a bit of that for, whether that's the right thing to use it for, I don't know, but it would help in making us more identifiable. And there seems to be quite a few comments about who to talk to and where to see us. And we try to make ourselves as, as visible as possible, but 
obviously when it gets colder and the like we cover up and our lanyards aren't visible but just as a way of, of helping with that possibly sure. face, face masks yeah, yeah. face masks yeah yeah that's a good idea yeah so again yeah we'll share we'll share these ideas um dave if you're you, we won't share the scoreboard idea if you're in if you're working on that we won't share that um but we will certainly share making cusp a little bit more identifiable um also cusp face masks to go along with the same theme and then we'll ask for fan feedback and see what they come up with um and go from there um and then point d um was 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 my was my own idea that i came up with around uh, an amber heroes um so we spoke to um Ian and the rest of the board about this um, so Am Amber Heroes really for me was recognising those that have gone above and beyond during this this pandemic and giving their fans a chance to nominate and recognise other fans that have maybe helped them like maybe John Smith had help from another fan down the road they went and did their shopping for three months there's there's an opportunity there for them to to nominate them and put them forward as an amber hero and then um we would work with the club to display these somewhere so we'd draw a heart and we'd say john smith was nominated for x by and put the fan's name and it have it as a have it as a lasting legacy that someone helped someone else and they were nominated as well as this then we'd look to when we're allowed, give them a couple of free tickets and they can come along, they can bring another family member to the game and, and see and see this see see the I don't want to say memorial, but see the see the hearts on the wall and see that their name is there in lights because they really supported someone during this pandemic and football clubs heart of the community. So it's a chance to sort of be proud of what you did and someone to nominate someone else and say that yeah they really helped them forward so that was an idea to use the endeavor funds to go towards the paint and the, the price of the tickets once we're allowed to let people in so again i welcome any comments if not we'll just we'll put that out to the fans and see what they say sounds good, sounds good to me james <clears throat> okay so at this point Ian, you can remain, or if if someone has a question that they would like to ask, just the the cusp panel without Ian being here, then we're we're opening up for questions. So if anyone has any questions that they want to discuss or James, any other before, business, they James, can. Um, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions on behalf of Kevin Jenkinson, who was going to be here but wasn't able to make it. So he did email a couple of questions uh if that's okay so the first one was around uh carol looker actually just um he'd like to think that the club and the fans will have an opportunity to pay a tribute to carol at some point during the season ideally when the abbey is as full as it can be so i guess that's maybe one to in you know would it be possible to have a minute silence or some sort of suitable tribute when I think, I think there will be some suitable tribute exactly what shape it takes and when uh, we don't know, open suggestions, but yeah, there will be, we'll work on uh, how we can pay tribute. I didn't actually know Carol, but I know a lot of people who did, and I've seen the tributes and see how warmly she was uh, held. So we've got to do something, but exactly what it is, I can't say just at the moment, but we will do something. Yeah, I think there's a virtual book of condolence, isn't there, that's been opened, so... Yeah. And CFU, I think, are they? Yeah, CFU, uh, CFU are doing, they've, they've said they're going to do something. So We're, we're going to put a memorial um, yeah. plaque up in the Cup Road Lane and um, probably on one of the walls in that area. It won't be the final version for the first game of the season because uh, there's a lockdown in Italy where some of the work is going to need to be done. Um, so it will be on hold for a little while. But we're going to put a temporary one in, in its place. And there's also been a um, crowdfund under um, made live by her son. So it's called Carol's One Last Raffle. 
So it, it, that could be promoted, that would be good. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, we right. can we can promote that. Uh, thank you, Dave. And uh, Kevin's final point was, I'd be interested to know what the plans are for the trial that the club is due to participate in on the return of fans to matches. I saw that Charlton are thinking of using their first home match of the season for this purpose. So I'm not sure whether we covered that off completely or not. Uh, I don't think we did. Um, uh, so I'm choosing my words, and I, we are we have had discussions about a trial event. Uh, the the reason why I'm being circumspect, and I don't want this to be out there, is that you, you we've all watched. Um, uh, has this been recorded? Yeah, we're still on recording, so I just yeah, want to okay. highlight that we are still under a recording. Yeah, okay. So the, the, there are discussions going on about the possibility of uh, a trial event. I can't say anything more at the moment. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. If there isn't anything else... Um, yes, I'll... James. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's frozen. Oh. Oh, gosh. Hello. I think hi David. Hi David. Yeah, we can hear you again. Sorry. Yeah, I was just wondering how, how comfortable the players are at the moment with the way things are. What sort of feedback you got from players with regards to playing in empty stadiums and um how far down the road are we to, to seal in our final signing or possibly not our final signing? I was at the training ground today. Uh, and I've spoken a lot with Mark Bonner uh, and the, the management team. The, the players are very happy. <laughs> they, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're really enjoying being back playing. The training ground is looking really good, particularly after the rain we've just had. But it's um, the setup out there is is really nice for them, and they're just really glad to be kicking a ball again. Um, in terms of uh, signings, uh, Mark's you know, made it clear that we're not quite finished yet, but um, there's the odd place that might get, a, get filled. Uh, but there's also the opportunity in the loan market, um, perhaps a bit later on. The transfer window is open until October. Yeah. So um, I think he's got most of what he wants in and the, and the key focus now is getting them all working together uh, and uh, get some practice time in for, in for them. But I've, I'd say the mood is very good. Good. Lovely. Thanks, Ian. Okay. Anything more for me or shall I leave you to your own devices? <coughs> thank you very much, Ian. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining in. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, uh, you yeah, know, well done all of you because uh, I think this is a really good working relationship and one that I'm keen to encourage. So uh, do please let me know if I can help. Sure. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, so if there's nothing else, I'll uh, I'll draw, just, draw to yeah. a close. Hang on a second, James. Sure. James. sure. Yeah, just just want to set the record straight a little bit. Um, at the very start of the meeting, you mentioned the fixture board and myself yeah. having a lot of work to do with it. Um, it wasn't totally me at all, to be honest. I think mean, Dave did a lot more work than I did. And I think that, that should be recognised that um, it was a sort of joint venture, although we, we managed to get the CUSP um, UIE fund to, to, do, to fund it. But Dave did a lot of, um, lot of growing. And so I think we need to just recognise that, sure. perhaps. Yeah. 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 Sure. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> Anything Nigel. from everyone? Yeah, um, James, I haven't got a question, but um, can I say something um, more of a sort of a pat on the back for, as, a, as an outsider looking in? I think you've had a really good first year. Um, and the thing that struck me most, I think, is how professional um you've, you've you've all been and how professional cusp looks um not least the the, the website um uh, and uh, and the, the the social media the twitter feed and such like so i think that's really 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 
uh, impressive. Um, um, so I think you should pat yourselves on your back for that. As you say, the first year spent um, establishing a relationship with the football club, great. Next year, establishing the relationship more with, with, the, with the fans. And as you've already hinted, I think the, the COVID return of fans to, to the grounds is, is such a good opportunity for us to do that. Um, the, the, on, on the agenda, you're, you're talking about supporting the club with a safe introduction uh, of fans at home matches. You could actually um, turn the emphasis around supporting fans with their reintroduction um, uh, to the Abbey at home matches or, or supporting both, whatever. But I think that really is a good opportunity. There will be gripes, I'm sure, from fans um, uh, uh, in the first few weeks, um, even though everyone's going to be, as, as, as Ian said, everyone's going to be really cooperative. I think that's absolutely right. But I'm sure as time goes on, there will be gripes. So there will be an opportunity, I think, for CUSP to step in and and uh, broker the answers and you know take issues up with the club. So well done, anyway. Sure. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks, Nigel. Thanks, Nigel. Thank so, yeah, I'll draw to a close. So, um, as we said right at the start, this has been recorded. So what we will do is we will, um, I think Philip is going to re rewatch it potentially, um, and make make a make a few formal minutes, and um, that we'll look to uh, publicise within sort of forty eight hours, uh, yeah. and then we'll make this video available. So if any fans haven't been able to go or don't want to read through the minutes or want to sort of see the, the flesh on the bone, then they're more than happy to, to watch. And if fans have a particular point that they want to just listen to, then yeah, they can, they can watch the video at that point. So yeah, we're going to aim to do that within 48 hours and then we'll start sharing sort of points that have been raised. So uh, potentially what to use the Endeavour Fund for, um, how to make I follow that more attractive. Um, we, we will go out and we will canvass opinion of fans following um, this AGM. So um, watch this space. So thank you all for coming. If there's nothing else, then we'll speak again soon. <laughs>